Deutschlands populärstes Auto, der Volkswagen, geht im großen Examen für seinen Besitzer mit Temperament durchs Feuer. Einmal in Zeitlupe. Diese Prüfungen werden nicht aus artistischen Gründen gemacht, sondern die privaten Nachahmung nicht unbedingt zu empfehlen. Aber wie man sieht... We're going to be driving the 2016 Volkswagen Beetle, in this case the upgraded R-Line, which also has a convertible roof. The basic styling of the Beetle hasn't changed much since 1934, but of course all the mechanicals are different. The most obvious change over the decades, the engine's no longer in the rear. Just a simple trunk. But overall, with updates, this is an excellent looking vehicle, I think. Still gets a lot of attention on the street. The base price of a Volkswagen Beetle hardtop is relatively cheap, starting around $19,000. This one was a bit more. We'll look at the window sticker right here. The price of the upgraded Beetle convertible R-Line, while it's not cheap, at $36,050. Then you add shipping, we're at $36,870. But keep in mind, there are no options. It's loaded with everything Volkswagen offers, from leather, navigation, stereo, automatic transmission, you get it. So we're getting a lot of car here, even though it's a lot of money. The base Beetle has a 1.8 liter turbo engine, putting out 170 horsepower. It comes with a base 5-speed manual transmission. This has the upgraded 2.0 liter putting out 210 horsepower. It comes with either a 6-speed manual or 6-speed automatic transmission. Fuel economy for both power plants runs 25 to 34 mpg, so you might as well spend the extra money for the more powerful engine, I think. The top is easy to put up and down. Just press the magic button. and then you get open air driving. Now that the top has been removed, it gives us a better look at the inside. We get a nice easy to read gauge cluster with lots of useful information. Two storage compartments, a medium sized glove box on the bottom, and a small compartment on top. The simplest climate control system on the planet. Three knobs, one for temperature, one for fan speed, and one for the vent. And there is a button that turns it on and off. It doesn't get simpler than this. This is all we need in a vehicle as far as climate controls. There's nothing better than this. Many of the previous audio and navigation systems on the Beetle as well as Volkswagen's in general, have been pretty hideous to operate. Not a problem here. Very simple system, easy to use. Doesn't get much better than this. Thank you, Volkswagen. If you're a tall driver, say over six feet, and you're wondering how much room is in these front seats, will not be an issue. Plenty of room for you everywhere, including headroom. That's the good news. For those in the rear seat, plenty of room, unless uh, you have legs, then you'll have to saw them off because with the seats all the way back you have about two inches of leg room in there. Not going to work. Only good for small packages and poodles. As long as we're doing a list of complaints, I have a couple more, as minor as they are. Underneath the doors, we got these rocker panels. They're way too wide. And you have this shelf here that collects dirt, mud, sand, 
gets on your pants every time you step out of the car. If you live where it rains a lot, you're going to carry a rag around to keep this clean, but your pants are going to do the cleaning for you. I'm not picking on the Beetle here. In fact, I'm not picking on Volkswagen. It seems most German cars have this feature, and I don't know why. It's very annoying. And it's just my opinion, but the last interior color I want in a convertible is black. Black attracts heat like a magnet. It sits out in the sun for any amount of time. It's like putting your butt in a frying pan. It just doesn't work very well. I looked on the VW website to get an update and it appears you have two choices either solid black or combination black and red which is slightly better but not much. I would like to see a very light tan color but apparently it's not available right now. It would make a lot more sense than this. But you'll just have to live with it. And I must point out these are minor complaints not a deal breaker to keep me from buying the car. Just slightly annoying, that's all. Now that we've looked at the specs, it's time to do some driving, and this automatic transmission has four modes. You can put it in drive, or you can shift down in sport mode, which livens performance a bit, or shift it to the right and choose gears manually. Then the fourth option, the manual shifter is on the steering wheel. If you want to shift manually without taking your hands off the steering wheel, there you go. If you want to open the trunk to see what's there, there's a secret to this. Not much room in there, but there is a spare tire underneath the floor panel, so I really can't complain much. Regardless of the transmission mode, this 210 horsepower turbo engine has more than enough power. Baby really moves. By the way, a lot of automotive journalists have been complaining about the brakes on this car, saying they're too, quote, grabby, unquote. That's good. That's what we want. I want the response of the pedal to be at the top. As soon as I press the pedal, not on the bottom. I have no issue whatsoever. These are excellent brakes as far as I'm concerned. As far as the power steering goes, I suspect it's electric. For while it's responsive enough, there's absolutely no road feel at all. It's just a sign of the times, and you'll just have to get used to it. The body structure is rather solid with the top up. When you put it down, there's a bunch of wobbling and shaking. Not a big deal, just something you have to get used to. The wind noise on this soft top vehicle is relatively low. Unfortunately, the microphone on my camera is picking up a lot more noise than it should, giving a bit of exaggeration. It's quieter than it sounds on the camera, trust me. We took a 65 mile per hour cruise in the Beetle 31.4 MPG. I do think that's the best we're going to see. Not bad, however. It's dark enough to test these headlights, so let's take them out and see how they perform. From a distance of 100 feet, we have the low beams on. More than adequate light. High beams. Plenty of light again. Here we have a building 300 feet away. The lights are on high beam. Excellent light. Go to low beam. Just barely makes it. Again, more than adequate. The Beetle doesn't qualify as a high-end sports car, but the cornering ability is more than adequate. 
just keep in mind you're not driving a Porsche. So far we've been driving with the top up, so now I lowered it. Let's see how much wind noise we can generate. Interior lights up good at night, doesn't it? At these slow speeds the wind noise is rather low. We'll take it a little quicker down the road. See what it sounds like then. Here's my take. Anytime you're driving a car that has more to do with styling, you're going to give up a lot of function that applies to the Beetle, and even more so if you get the convertible. As long as you understand that going in, it's really not an issue. It's definitely a good looking car, economical to run, fun with the top down. If you're looking for a rag top small car, this is definitely worth a look. <laughs> Thank you.